because with agents, there's always that fear. I remember even being young, trying mm -hmm. to get an agent, and I was in, I think it was college, mm -hmm. and I was so excited. I remember I told all my friends, yeah, I've got an agent, I've got an agent. Yeah, like, man's big time now. She get yeah, like, I'm, like, I'm uptown now, so, like, but you never know. First of all, also, there's always the thing of, will that Asian find work for you? Will they do the best for you? Are they, are they just there for the money? Like, being in the industry and doing what you do, have you ever seen an Asian who, like, that obviously are trustworthy and who maybe aren't trustworthy and what, what would you, like, what, what would you say, like, they're, like, like, the best recommended agents are? Um, so I've got a list of voiceover agents that I can send to, um, Darren. So anyone who on the call, who, who wants to get into it, um, once they've done their voice will, maybe they can kind of reach out, reach out to them. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And I think it's just about kind of doing your research, really looking at actors that you admire, that you like the work that they've done and kind of, even if you're, you're at home and you watch a show and you see an actor and you think, oh, that was really, really good. Or that was a good show kind of follow them and see what agents they're with. It doesn't necessarily mean that the work that they're doing for me, they're going to be able to do for you because we're two different people. But I think it's kind of word of mouth really as well. Um, and looking at following someone's career and working out, you know, whether that's the type of work that you'd want to do. And then it's kind of from there, you just got to take a, take a chance really. But you'll know, I always say, give it about 18 months before you decide whether the agent is for you or not. Because when you first sign with an agent, it does take you a little while to kind of get into the into the swing of things. Yeah, nah. yeah. And with and with that, so now as a, I'm a voiceover actor, mm -hmm. I found my agent. I yeah. found what I want to do. Do you get what I mean? I've even got a job. I've done a little audition. I've got a job. I just snatched it. Now we're talking payment and fees. Less. Like, I don't like. I don't wanna be inclusive, but like, what is the highest like? Because voice like I I was talking with Dan. Voiceover is they get some good money do you get what i'm saying so like what would you say like on average is like for someone who would want to go into that field like money wise are they wasting their time or money wise do you feel like it's investment and what type of fees would you get from yeah, yeah. oh definitely you're not wasting your time to get so it's very big money it's 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 sometimes bigger money than acting than tradi traditional acting okay. um so for instance you, as a voiceover artist, let's say for instance, you're a voiceover artist now, you have a flat rate fee. So you, for you just to step into the room can be between 250 and 500 pounds for the hour. So that means if you're in that room for two hours, you've come out with a grand already, and that's you not doing any work. Um, then obviously they pay money to kind of buy you out so that every time that advert comes on, they don't have to keep buying you. So they give you like a buyout fee. 100%, yeah. And then you'll have like production fee, all of these new costs that start coming. And um, that can rack up. So I've, I have a friend that did a, an Adidas campaign. So literally he was like the campaign for like a new running shoe or something. So I think he, over the six month period, I think he went into the, into the recording studio maybe about four times. He was in there for about, I don't know, maybe about an hour each time. So in that six months, he's done about four hours yeah. and he made 115 grand. Oh. Yeah. So it's been guys, are you hearing that? Please stay welcome. 150, 115 grand is not at all small money. You know what I mean? So for four hours work. Yeah. For four hours work. Good money. Yeah. Very good money. Yeah, I haven't seen that money yet, but I've seen, but you know, not yet, not yet. Not yet, see, 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 see. Exactly, see. but yeah, it's good. It's definitely good money, definitely. And um, the, going back to like the transition from mm -hmm. acting, like uh, acting on stage and on, on, on film to voiceover acting, what would you say like personally is like, do you prefer more? What do you enjoy more as well? Mm. Um, do you know what? I like them both. I do like them both. I'm passionate about them both. I think I really, really enjoy voiceover work though, because I think being able to kind of tell a story and convey pictures through your voice, I just find it fascinating that you can change your voice in different ways to tell different stories. Um, so I, and I feel like you can play around more with voiceover acting, with acting unless you've got a particular director that's going to allow you that freedom to play, 
you're kind of regimented to doing, yeah, to doing what they want. Mm -hmm. With voiceover work, for instance, like on Friday, I went for a, a voiceover, um, voiceover audition for a video game. And they were literally like, you know, go in the booth and do what you want. So I like that flexibility and that freedom to be able to play. Mm -hmm. And maybe sometimes I don't think traditional acting gives you that, but I'm passionate about them both. Passionate about them both, but I'd say voiceover, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it maybe even more, that little bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nice, nice. And also um, going to going to voiceover acting and train the voice, especially with um, like accents, for example, I wanted to actually delve into accents because that that can get your range so much higher, like in anything you do in acting, do you get what I mean? Because it's about a character at the end of the day. Like how would you like, what what like what accents have you done for example like, and if you could even you know give us a little an example of something just shed some light and show us one or two things we i'll be pleasured <laughs> um so yeah i've had to do a few accents um i think with acting with accent acting i'd say you have to know what type of a learner you are how you learn because there are some people that can literally watch a film and just copy an accent that way just by listening to it. I'm not really that person. I'm a kinesthetic learner. So I actually need to have a dialect coach. So for instance, if I'm going for a particular audition, it's a big audition and I know I've got a specific accent, you know, cause um, even down to America, there's like 50, what, 52 states and they all sound different. So you have to, it's not about just doing a general American accent. They have to sound specific. So if I'm going for an audition, I will pay the money to maybe spend like a 25 pound an hour to go to a dialect coach just to work about the placement of your mouth because you're investing in yourself anyway you're investing in yourself you know so but with accent it's all about mouth placement so obviously we're from london yeah so usually we with our ths we turn them into f's so we might say growth and that becomes an f mm. but if you're doing say like if i was doing like a mancunian accent then i might be talking more like from the back of my mouth okay so if yeah, I was talking yeah. like that and then maybe if I'm doing like a Kenyan, I might drop into maybe sort of like that. I might talk a little bit more softer yes. or something, you know? So it's, it's just about where you place your, your mouth. Um, but sometimes you're not going to be able to hear that. So people, it's good to have a dialect coach that can actually look at your mouth and see where you're going wrong, if you are. Yeah, 100%. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> let me just see here what else I had. And, um, your voice in general mm. how do you look after? i know it sounds sick but how do you look after your voice like i remember being like in hampton school and they they said like you can actually hinder your voice your voice is such a big instrument like my teacher used to go on and go on and go on about like even when i right, cool, let's say you're shouting let's say i go to a concert and i'm shouting hey 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 and i'm constantly vigorously shouting and like, you get a sore throat like how do you especially for someone like you who your voice is your instrument your voice is like your work of art at the end of the day and that's what's getting you money how do you like take care of your voice and even for voiceover um for people who aren't voiceover actors and because we we talk a lot when we're doing our work and when we're doing sales so we have to speak and we have to constantly have to make sure we have clarity in our voice as well so how would you say how would you take care of your voice in a sense um so i think i think you're so right as well because you're this is this is my money really yeah, so exactly, 100%. If that goes god forbid then your, your money goes your career goes you know so first of all i don't smoke so you know you you make sure you kind of look after your voice in that way if I'm gonna, if I've got a voiceover audition, I'm not gonna go raving the night before because I know I'm gonna be maybe shouting, maybe mm. in smoky environments or, or talking a lot. So rest in your voice, getting adequate sleep, that's actually a good thing as well. Um, not talking for talking, you know, sometimes you have to be quiet. So sometimes just rest in, rest in your voice. Um, you can also buy like steam steamers, voice steamers, where you can okay. steam yeah so you like a face steamer but you just put your your mouth on it it steams your voice um i drink a lot of hot drinks so like a lot of herbal teas oh. so that kind of helps and like honey and lemon and things like that um so yeah just just looking after your voice in that way another top tip as well like if you if you're at an audition or you've got a voiceover audition and your mouth's just feeling like it can't 
get the words out. If you eat a green apple, then it sharpens up your voice. I don't know why, but the green, <laughs> I don't know, but the green, green apple, apple. <laughs> the green apple is the trick. So if you, you know, that little things like that, you'll find your little tips, your little tricks. But definitely, you got to look after the voice. You have to. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And um, and um, lastly, one last question, like, I know it's a cliche, but for anyone like who who wants to be a voiceover actor, what would you say, like, what's your number one, like, before anything, like, major key tip, major key tip before delve into this type of career or even just acting in general, like, what would you say your major key tip is? Um, so I think if we're talking about voiceover acting. My major key tip would be just remember that you've got to speculate to accumulate in this business. So especially voiceover acting. So what I mean by that is you're going to have to spend money before you see money. Mm -hmm. So don't do a voice reel in your friend's studio, like do a proper, spend the money to do a proper voice reel. Because if you do one that's a bit shoddy or a bit half hearted, once you've sent that out, it's such a closed industry. Everyone knows it. Everyone you're kind of just written off and you won't be able to get back in. So you want to spend the money. Um, I think I spent for my one about 275 pounds. But remember, if we're saying your flat rate fee is between 250 and 300, 500 to even go in the room for an hour, you're going to make that back in an hour. So it's better for you to spend that money to do that. Um, I'd say practice reading. Definitely practice reading. If you're not a confident reader, you need to practice your reading. 100%. 100%. You know, and your sight reading because... You, especially with voiceover acting, you're given scripts as you get there yeah. and you're expected to go in the booth within five minutes and do that. So if you're not a confident reader, time is money and you don't want to waste their time because they'll start getting, you know, agitated and, and then again, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in that situation. So make sure, you know, even if like you've got dyslexia or, or you're not a very good reader, make sure you've got your highlighters. Yeah, for some people like, even me, I, I can't lie, as much as I love acting, do you know what I mean? If I see a whole page of words, I just, I, like, I just start, to, yeah, I just sort of get shocked. And then like, I met, like, I'm not the best reader, but I may start to stutter and then that's when I start to stumble and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like how did you, how did you, how did you work that? Like or, yeah, or maybe if you got a piece of work that was like, had a lot of words or a lot of difficult words, how did you manage to conquer that? Then? Yeah. So like little things, like I, I would just keep reading it. Um, I quite like reading, but I've got better. I didn't like reading. I didn't used to like it at all. And I know what you mean about the stumbling over your words. Cause once you've done it once, it's like a plague. It just keeps coming back to haunt you. And then you mm, keep yeah, yeah. yourself all confused and you're feeling embarrassed now. And but you just got to remember, you know, you're human. So you will fluff and you will make mistakes. You know, I still do it. But just practicing, practicing your reading, practice something called sight reading. So print out little bits of text and be able to read it and look up because you want to be able to familiarize yourself with words. So like you're almost reading five words in front if that makes sense so you mm. look that confident with the text you know but have your highlighters um have your ruler if you need to go for you know like go through the the lines follow the lines whatever it is that that makes it easier for you just make sure you're prepared um and just practice it's all about practice really i know it sounds a bit a bit cliche but you just have to practice with the reading there's nothing there's nothing really else that you can do and another thing I'd say, be able to take direction because yeah. sometimes you'll go into a voiceover studio and you'll have like the director or the sound engineer in the next room. And usually they're not a director. So they'll give you random direction like, oh, you know, on the word love, can you make it sound dark? And you think to yourself, what does that even mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. how do you make love sound dark? So they will be saying random things. And then sometimes you'll have another person in your ear a client from New York and another person in Berlin. So you're having to take like five different directions. Um, so just be able to take direction, take your time and listen to what they're actually asking you to do. And most of the time, you see like, for instance, I gave you that example about how do you make love sound dark? If you think about the word dark or something dark as you say love, usually it comes through your voice. So it's about what you think and that will then kind of um be depicted in your voice if that makes sense yeah yeah, yeah 100 percent um uh i'd also like to ask you Sora, mm. like in in terms of like, some real sorry <laughs> that's all right that's all right 
so like in terms of um that like future work like what do you have upcoming like what can we look forward to to see see you in as well because you've actually taken a time out and like although it's our first time seeing you and hearing you you know what i mean we want to hear more anyway so yeah um, so, um, I did, I filmed a, a BBC One drama last year, so I think that's coming out on November the 20th, um, it's called Small Axe, um, this is the thing Steve McQueen, um, so that's with like John Boyega and Letitia Wright and stuff yeah. like that, so that will be, that will be big, um, that's November the 20th, and, yes, can we find it on? Say that again, sorry? Where can we that on? Um, BBC One. BBC One, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yesterday I got a I got a job actually, so I'm gonna be in Call the Midwife. I don't know if you watch that show. It's probably you might have seen it. I don't even watch it myself, but that's again BBC One. But I haven't started filming that yet. But I'll let you know when that's when that's gonna air. So you can keep an eye out for that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Also, um, so right now what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try and open the floor to actual people, or get some actual questions in. So. If if anyone has any questions for Soroka, like please be it, please just feel free put it in the chat and I'll definitely I'll come ask for you. Let me see now. Just one second with me. Thank you. So, yeah, so a few have come in. Um, the first one is, if I wanted to start with voiceover acting right now, what steps would I take? Um, so first thing, get yourself a voice reel. Uh, so there's some really good companies. I can, I can let, um, let you guys know that after. Um, some really good companies where you can go and actually record a voice reel. As I mentioned before, you want to spend the money. So, you know, save up or be prepared to spend about, to 250 to 300 no more than that um to do a voice reel again start start like listening to voiceovers become aware of them so as you're watching tv and you're listening to adverts hear the voiceovers and kind of know which what your voice is what your style is so know whether you've got like a childlike voice a high pitched is it husky you know maybe even record yourself on um you know your whatsapp audio or whatever send it to people tell them like what do you think this sounds like so that they can describe your voice so that you know what type of adverts you'll be going for and then once you've done your voice reel yeah just just um send it out to to agents and and just go for it go for it and be confident and know that you might not all of them might come back to you but try again if you don't hear from them give it about three months send them again because some of them they don't even really listen to them so you want to keep keep sending them Right. So yeah, so I hope I've answered your question. Yeah, nice. Um, the second one here says, "What is the best way to get into industry without experience?" Is that like acting, the acting industry? We're, yeah, with acting and voiceover. So, for example, say for example, I like with anything you do, people are going to ask for experience. You get what I mean? Let's say I've never ever ever had like a voiceover. That I've never even worked on a piece, but I. But it's something that I, I feel like I'll be very good at. Everyone tells me that, oh, you have Johnny, you have such a good voice, you have such a strong voice. How would I, you know, get get in? Um, like, what would be the best way to get in? Um, so I think if you've had no experience, then I would say create your own content. So again, spend a little bit of money, get yourself like a ring light, couple of lights. Um, you can usually use your iPhone or a good camera, a phone with a good camera, and maybe like learn a couple of monologues or a couple of scenes and film yourself, record yourself. Because obviously, if you've got no acting experience, then you're not going to have anything to send to these agents for them to see you do. And no one's really going to take a chance on somebody that they they don't know or they haven't seen their work before. So I would say, yeah, learn a few monologues and record yourself. 
and make it like into like a little show reel and then send it, send it off to some agents. There's a good book called Contacts that you can maybe buy on Amazon. That's got like a list of all like the top agents in London. Um, and then, yeah, just send them, drop them an email. They usually have their emails. Tell them that, you know, you haven't had an experience, but it's something that you really want to get into. And then have a little clip that kind of showcases showcases a little bit of your, your monologues or, or things that you've done. And have about three clips and give them variety. So not just the same thing. So different things for different... Yeah, give them a few different... Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you even touched on the next question, which was any, like, any like what agencies would you go to so like any go-to ones that like, yeah. for so for example you know how you have um star now mm -hmm. for like to go if you want to get work get credits and whatnot mm -hmm. do you get what i mean and spotlight and uh, all of these things like what is there is there like um voiceover versions of that then or um or is there any like major companies that are known for voiceover not not really not really i've got as i said i've got like a list of like top voiceover agents that I know that there's about 15 of them because there's not many as I said it's quite a tight-knit industry um but you will find as well sometimes talent agents like so agents that deal with acting they sometimes have voiceover agents attached to them as well so if you get in kind of that way sometimes they can pass you through to the voiceover section as well but I would say spotlight you mentioned a good one yeah. Spotlight is a really good um, forum to be on as, a, as an actor or performer and voiceover artist. So I don't know if you can just join that though without having any experience. So you'd have to check that one out. Yeah, I'm not sure. But if you can, then you know, you pay like a yearly membership, you go on there and then they start putting you up for jobs or breakdowns will come in and you can put yourself up for them. So that's another way that you can get in. But I definitely think like having a visual, something that shows that you can act yeah is a good start all right so thank you so much that like, you don't even understand like yeah, how much it's a pleasure today that like, having someone from that like, actual industry oh, yeah. who, who us. And i'm sure like a lot of people as well are, like, as i am you know what i mean yeah, you're so, welcome you're welcome i hope i answered your questions and as i said i'll send you you know a list of um some agents and any other questions that you guys have then just forward them to Daniel and I'm sure he'll get them to me and I, I can, you know, be a fan. We will do that. Yeah, thank yeah. you again. And yeah, you're, you're welcome. Hi, I'm Miss Candy and you need this in your life. You need to buy and subscribe. Inside Success.